Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Eddie Jones's England training squad ahead of the Autumn Internationals starting in about a month's time. It's not the final England squad. It's essentially a squad that's going to meet up this coming weekend for a few days of training. So it's, it's not going to necessarily be the exact squad that plays in the Autumn, but it gives us a bit of an indication. Specifically in this video, I'm going to focus in on the back three rather than just doing a whole conversation about the squad he's picked. Because it's not the final squad for the Autumn, I thought I'd focus on a couple of positions in particular. Wing and fullback is the one on this occasion. If you like this video, if you like this sort of content, then please subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment down below. Selection and England selection when it comes to Eddie Jones is always a hot topic of debate. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Let's get into it. So I reckon that you could make the case that the back three for England is the most stacked position that they have in terms of personnel. I think if everyone's fit, the back row possibly comes close. But when I was just jotting down the names that I think are worthy of mention in terms of England's selection for the back three, there's so many that I think you, you can get into. I'm going to go through it now and go through the ones that have been selected today in that kind of autumn training squad, but also others who probably in the pecking order aren't actually that near the squad, but are still worthy of mention, which to me therefore suggests it's an area of strength for England. So getting right into it, in terms of the players that have been selected in the training squad today, we've got Arundel, Joseph, Thokna Singer, Noel, May, Stewart and Furbank. So if we're starting with those, first of all, Arundel obviously went to the Tour of Australia <clears throat> as an apprentice, did make his debut, came off the bench, scored with his first touch did something similar in the opening round of the Gallagher Premiership when London Irish hosted Worcester, came off the bench and with virtually his first touch, scored a brilliant try. Seriously exciting player. And I think he's one to keep an eye on moving forward. I think it's good that he's in there. I think he's one of those players that a year out from the World Cup, even though he doesn't have too much international experience, it's worth him being given an opportunity because he has X Factor. He's also strong as well. I heard Danny Kerr on a podcast speaking about how strong he was in the gym when they were doing weights over in Australia. So he has strength. He has raw speed. Really exciting prospect. And I think he perhaps gives England a little bit of X factor that maybe they've been lacking in recent times. So I'm really glad to see him there. Also a mention for Will Joseph, his teammate at London Irish, traditionally listed as a centre. He started on the wing so far this season in the games he's played. And perhaps that could be where we see him for England if he is to get too much of an opportunity. Exciting young player. Not quite sure he is going to get the opportunities at this stage though, a year out from the World Cup. I could well be wrong. Maybe we will see him in those autumn squads, but I think he's a guy who's edging into that England squad, but maybe isn't quite there yet when you look at some of the other names that we mentioned. Joe Thock and a singer. I think this is a fascinating selection because Eddie Jones clearly likes Joe Thock and a singer. He likes his pace and he likes his raw power and just how big he is as a winger. But we haven't really seen the best of him, have we? If, if we're being honest, he's had a lot of issues with injury in his defence. But when we do see him fit, Eddie Jones tends to select him. So personally, I probably would stay away from him just because I don't think we've seen enough of him on a consistent basis for it to be worthwhile. But Eddie Jones likes him. So I think that's why we're, we're seeing him in the squad. And actually, the fact that he has been injured so much, getting him into a training camp probably isn't the worst idea but in terms of moving forward looking ahead to that world cup then i'm not so sure about that selection next couple more guys bags of experience jack knoll and johnny may we know what they can do we know what they bring it's really good operators at international level so happy to see them in the squad no, no like no issues there really i think it's one of those where we all understand why they've been selected um and so yeah, no issues with it, despite maybe some of the, the more exciting players that we have in the squad. And then Freddie Stewart and George Furbank. By the way, these are all just the players that I mentioned previously that have been selected in that training squad. I'm going to get into some other names who are kind of dark horses, but players worth mentioning in just a moment. Freddie Stewart. Now, what about this? I was thinking about Freddie Stewart. And I think he, in a very short space of time, has got himself into a position where if he's fit, he plays for England. And there's not too many other players 
that you could say that for. Maru Atoje is one. I think Tom Curry is probably one. Manu Tuolangi maybe, but he's, he's so injury prone that actually I'm, I'm not sure that he quite qualifies for this discussion. But I think Freddie Stewart has locked down that fullback place, which is unbelievable in a very short space of time. But he's that good. He's so good under the high ball. Kicking so important now in the game. So Freddie Stewart at fullback, yes, absolutely. He's in my starting 15 if he's fit every time. And then George Furbank. I really like George Furbank for Northampton. He is part of a very, very good team that plays some really exciting attacking rugby. But again, I'd put him in the category of us. I'm not sure we've ever seen his best for England. Now, in his defence, he was given that really tough debut, wasn't he, in the Stade de France a couple of seasons ago, start of the Six Nations, when England lost. They almost came back to, to win it, but they, they did end up losing. And I'm just not necessarily sure that George Furbank has yet proven himself as a consistent international calibre player. That might be quite harsh, but I personally just haven't seen that yet, as good as he is for Northampton. And if we compare that with, say, Freddie Stewart, someone, the player that I just mentioned, in a really short space of time, he's immediately come into the international fold and looked at home. Sometimes players just find their level, and I wonder whether George Furbank is that international calibre player. Hope I'm wrong. Maybe he will prove me wrong. I've got no issues with that, but that's where I see him in the squad at the moment. OK, so those are the players that have been picked. There's so many more that we can mention. I've jotted a load down. I'm just going to go from the top of the page. And the first name on there is Caden Murley. He's had a brilliant start to the Premiership season, scoring bags of tries. But it's not just his try scoring. It's his all-round play. He's incredibly solid. He's quick. He does everything well. You know, he's good under the high ball. He's just a really safe pair of hands. And he's a guy that I'm a little bit surprised we're not seeing mentioned more in terms of England squads. I'd like to see him in there because I've been really impressed with him over the last year to two years. I think he's come into his own in, in that Quinn side. And on form, he's playing really, really well at the moment. So I'd have perhaps quite liked to see him in this squad. It wasn't to be. But I wonder, what do you reckon? How close is he, do you think, to that England squad? And as I've already said, there's lots of options in there. I think Caden Murley should perhaps be in that conversation. Another one that is worthy of mention, don't think he should necessarily be in at the moment, but is Lewis Liner. Based upon what we've seen in, in recent years, he's been really, really good. I know we haven't really seen him at the start of the new premiership season, so therefore, for obvious reasons, he's not involved. But again, is a name that when we're talking about the depth of wingers in England, it's worth mentioning him. I mentioned Joe Thocken, a singer earlier. His teammate for Bath, Will Muir, is another one that I think is just a really, really good player. He has played for England Sevens in the past, so I don't know if he has other nationality and whether you know maybe he, he could have his head turned elsewhere. But again, is another guy that he's good under the high ball. He's like a horse in full motion, isn't he? So rangy, but so powerful. He's really has played well in a Bath team who've been absolutely abject in recent seasons. And he's also playing well in a Bath team when he's broken through to make it first of all in the professional ranks. I think that's really impressive. Impressive. That says a lot about him. So he's another guy I'd have thought maybe should have been on the fringes of the England squad a little bit more. Uh, Tommy Freeman as well. Did I mention him before? I think he may well be. He, he's been called up as well, actually. I think I missed off Tommy Freeman. Um, made his debut in Australia. He's listed as a fullback, but I know he holds ambitions uh, for this season in the Six Nations to start on the wing for England. So I think wing is, is where we're going to see him more. He played on the wing in the Midlands derby for Northampton at the weekend. Um, again, he's just a, another one of these guys. He's a good young player, scrapping around. It's so competitive. Whether he is going to be able to lock down one of those positions, I'm not sure. But he's in with a chance. Eddie clearly wants to take another look at him at the moment. Anthony Watson, injured once again, been plagued with injuries. If he does get back fully fit, for me, he comes straight back into the England team. I think Eddie loves him. I think he's so good, so solid that at the moment, obviously, injured, can't be involved, but he will come back in as well. And then there's three more guys really quickly. Max Malins, he seems to have fallen out of favour a little bit. He did get into that England side. He's really good for Saracens. He was brilliant for Bristol the season he was on loan there. Scored bags of tries last season, um, but at the moment just maybe isn't the guy that, that Eddie favours. Perhaps he's seen enough of him and has decided that he's not at international level. Ollie Woodburn's another one. Now, I appreciate Ollie Woodburn is probably miles away from this England team. But if you're talking about a solid winger who's consistently good, isn't the flashiest. You know, he's not a, 
he's not an Arundel or someone like that who has just pure gas, but he does everything really well. He's really good on kickoffs. We saw that in the Exeter Harlequins game. He does a lot of unfashionable things really, really well. So I'm not saying he should be involved, but I think when I was putting down a list for players to be worthy of discussion, Ollie Woodburn was one of those. He's not going to be involved, but actually he perhaps deserves a bit more credit for how good and how consistent he is. Ollie Thorley at Gloucester, again, someone that we just haven't really seen break into that England team, have we? Bags of pace, but for whatever reason, Eddie Jones doesn't necessarily favour him. And then the final player that I want to mention is Radwan at Newcastle. Adam Radwan, who is arguably the quickest player in the Gallagher Premiership, certainly possibly the, the quickest English player. He is so, so exciting, but I don't think we're going to see him break into this England team. Because when I spoke about Henry Arundel and I spoke about how he is incredibly fast, but I think he's also a bit more well-rounded. And I think Arundel has the potential to break into that England team. I think Eddie Jones looks at Radwan at the moment. And for as good as he is with ball in hand, I still think Eddie Jones thinks he's a little bit too raw. And I'll be inclined to agree with him. I still think that when we're talking about defending under the high ball and positioning and all those other intangibles that come with international rugby, I'm not sure at this stage Adam Rabwan ticks enough of those boxes. There's no doubting what he does with ball in hand. He's arguably the most exciting player with ball in hand that England could field. And maybe you should look at what a player can do rather than what they can't do. But at international level, I would have my concerns. And there's part of me, I've already said that Freddie Stewart is nailed on for me at fullback. There's part of me that would just love Arundel one wing and Rabwan on the other. And you just got pure gas and see what happens. I think that's kind of playing fantasy manager a little bit. You have to be more considered with these selections. So therefore, that's why I understand that Radwan isn't there. I think I've kind of covered everyone. Have I missed anyone out on that list? I was jotting names down and it kept getting longer and longer. Is there anyone obvious that maybe I've missed out on? And what do you think? Who should Eddie select in his back three? For me, I'm going to go Freddie Stewart at fullback. Either Jack Knoll or Johnny May on one wing, because I think you want a guy that's experienced and you know what you're going to get. And then outside of that, I would like to see Arundel perhaps deployed on the wing and let's see what he can do with a consistent run in the team. So many other players there worthy of mention. When it comes to selection for the autumn squads and for the World Cup looking ahead to a year, I think there's going to be a lot of players that, that are pretty disappointed that could well have been on the plane. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. I'll try and do some more in terms of England selection as we get towards that autumn, which is going to be awesome. Can't wait for it. But remember, subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. But most importantly, particularly around debates of selection, comment down below. England's back three. Who should be in? Who shouldn't? See you in the next one.